What if I told you that there was a website that allowed you to trade stocks and other ETFs in the stock market without any money? Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Money with Mani. Today I'm here to tell you about the Investopedia Stock Simulator. This particular simulator teaches you how to trade in the stock market and how to use the stock market to your advantage without the use of money. And before we begin, I want to say I'm not a financial advisor and you should always do your own due diligence and research before taking part in an investment scheme. Let's get into it. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to see how to set up an account. We're going to see how to use this for options trading, how to use a simulator for options trading. That's what I'm currently learning. And that's what's currently in right now, I see in the stock market. And we're also going to see a few examples of how to do that. And in the end, we're going to see how this exactly works. So while I wait for my screen to load, please be sure to hit that red subscribe button down below. And did you know, by the way, if you hit that red subscribe button, guess what color it turns? It turns gray. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So this is my account. This, you can go, go to investopedia.com slash simulator. You guys can start by creating, creating an account. So we're just going to search up Investopedia Stock Simulator. I'm going to do that. And we're going to start trading because you guys are registering, right? And then you want to use an email address that you're gonna, you're gonna have to confirm this later. So you wanna use that email address. Use my school email address. And then you're just gonna wanna fill everything in and then authenticate it later on. And then you'll be, you'll just be redirected to a login page and then you're ready to trade. So I'm just gonna go back to this. You'll be led to this once you log in. And currently it's a Saturday afternoon. So the market is closed. That's why nothing, you can you see literally nothing. And I've only placed one order. I've placed one order, but I don't know. I'm not sure why it's like not showing up. Ah, there it is. I placed a call for Apple, a call option for Apple. And the current price 179, I put the expiration date of January 14, 2022 at $180. So I'll explain what that means. So basically for calls, what calls are is your extent you bet on the stock to go up at a certain price point. And if they go up, you make that price difference. So the current price of Apple is $179.45. By the end of January 14, 2022, which is when this contract of calls expires, which is when this deal expires, I predicted that it will go up to $180. Now, if it goes up to at least that much, I get, oh, okay. So basically if it goes up to at least that much, I get about $6 per share if we go here. So that's what happens. This will actually take effect on Monday since, since the market is closed. And let's also see how to trade shorts. So you're, you're gonna wanna go to the trade button right here and look up your company name. Let's, let's do Apple again. I'm not really gonna buy this time. Apple, Apple Inc. And you wanna buy for a quantity, let's do, okay, never mind. this is stock, sorry. You have to go, to, under the trade, you have to go to options. I accidentally click stocks instead. So you, you do the same thing. You look up the company name, Apple. 
and be careful what you click for because this is calls and this is puts. Puts is like betting on the stock to go down. That's for pessimists. Like if you are a pessimist, that's for you. But I'm an optimist. I'll take calls. So current share price is 179.45. And if you want, and underneath this tab, you can select the time period. So it would be really safe to clear the longer time period you take, the safer it will be. But don't take too long, otherwise it it doesn't, it's not very valid anymore. So let's say you're going to take January 14, 2022, which is what I did before. And you're going to, you're going to say that the stock will go up by 185 or 180. You will get that price difference then. So you're going to want to click this on the call side and you want to select the contract number of contracts you can buy it depends on you but i usually buy maximum right now i've started this so i usually buy three to four i'm just going to do one for the example purposes and target price jury order you have to preview order and your total comes out to this much and you can submit the order to make it done so that's basically it i'm not going to really buy today because i think i've bought enough and I want to see everything in action in the stock market. So let's so let's get the dictionary definition of options. Options Investopedia. Investopedia is actually a great website for all like definitions. I often use it to learn when I don't understand something. So this is a good example. Definition. Okay. Options definition. So options are a financial instrument that base, that's based on the value of underlying securities such as stocks. An options contract offers the buyer the opportunity, opportunity to buy or sell depending on the type of contract they hold the underlying assets. So there are two types of contracts in options. There's calls and there's puts, but I was explaining before. So an options contract offers the buyer an opportunity to buy or sell depending on the contract they hold. And unlike the futures, the holder is not required to buy or sell the asset if they dis decide against it. Each contract will have a specific expiration date by which the holder must exercise their option. The stated price on an option is known as the strike price. Options are typically bought and sold through online or retail brokers. Okay, let's see calls and puts options. Hang on, let me find. Okay, so what are calls? If anytime you're confused, you can just search it up and mostly Investopedia will come on. So a call option gives the holder the right to buy a stock and put option gives the holder the right to sell a stock. Think of a call option as a down payment on a future purchase. So, for example, I'm just going to give my favorite example that I love to use when I explain calls. So, for example, a potential homeowner, you see a new develop, you see like a new development growing up. You might want the right to purchase the home in the future but you only want to exercise that right after certain developments around the area are built. Maybe you want a pool in that area or a playground for the kids, but you would benefit from the option of buying or not. Imagine if you can buy a call option from the developer of the home to buy the home at say 400K at a point in the next three years. So while they can, you know it's a non-refundable deposit, Naturally, the developers wouldn't grant such an option for free. The, pre the potential home buyer, you, needs to contribute a down payment to lock that in, to lock that right in. So with respect to an option, the cost, this cost is known as the premium. Premium is what you pay for the option contract, for the contract to 
It's like basically a down payment. So in our home example, the deposit might be $20,000 that the buyer pays the developer. Let's say two years have passed and now the developments are built and zoning has been approved. The home buyer exercises the option and buys the home for $400,000 because that is the contract purchase. The market value of the home may have doubled through to $800,000, but however, because the down payment locked in the predetermined price, it's already locked there because you bought it at $400,000, the buyer will only pay $400,000. The buyer is, in this case, you. So now in an alternate scenario, say the zoning approval doesn't come through until year number four. This is one year past the expiration date of the, this option. Now the home buyer has to pay the market price because the contract has expired. In either case, the developer keeps the original $20,000 collected. Okay, now let's explain puts. Now think of a put option as an insurance policy. If you own your home, you're likely to familiar with the process of purchasing homeowner's insurance. So a homeowner buys a homeowner's policy to protect their home from damage, right? They pay an amount called premium for a certain amount of time. Let's say, let's take a year. The policy has a face value and it gives the insurance holder protection in the event the home is changed. What if instead of a home, your asset was a stock or index investment? So similarly, if investor, want, if investor A wants insurance on their S&P 500 index portfolio, they can purchase put options. An investor may fear that the bear market is near. Like I said before, these, these are for pessimists and they may be unwilling to lose more than 10% of their long position in the S&P 500 index. If you're a bear on something, then you can make money off of that as well with puts. So if the S&P 500 is currently trading at $2,500, they can purchase a put option, giving them the right to sell the index at $2,250, for example, at any point in the next two years. So in the next two years, if the S&P 500 index goes from 2,500 to 2,250, and that actually happens and they sell it at that point, they make that difference of $250 or 250 points. So basically, they have made 250 points by being able to sell the index at 2250 when it's trading at 2000, a combined loss of just 10%. In fact, even if the market drops to zero, the loss would only be 10% if this put option is hold. But I don't, I like trading options more because I'm a little bit more bullish on the market right now, considering that Jerome Powell is still holding and strong and recovering our market this way. And, but again, purchasing this option will carry a cost, the premium. And if the market doesn't drop during that period, the maximum loss on the option is just a premium spent. And calls also, and calls have a little bit more of loss potential loss but if you know what you're doing you won't be there so i'm going to also show you how to do puts trade puts so hang on let me just share my screen please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and it turns gray just remember that okay so we're going to see how to trade puts so if you like doing puts, let's see, what do we do? So expiration date, we can just change the contract. So you type in a symbol, let's do another, let's do another stock. Let's do Pfizer, Pfizer. Even though I'm probably not gonna do this. This is just for example purposes. So you wanna do puts, right? The Select the date first. We're going to do January 20, 14th, 2022 again. And this time we're going to go on the put side, which is this side over here. And the share price this time is 52.78. You're betting on the price to go down, right? So you want to click on this. 
strike price is fifty dollars. Strike price is price is like basically the price you think it'll go down till till this date, and you just select the contract, review the order, preview it. Oh shoot, I forgot to add the number of contracts. Yeah, you add the number of contracts. I'm just gonna add one preview order and you submit order and you should see the difference on your screen if it, the market's open. And if it's not, you'll see that on Monday. And that's basically it. So thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found this mission helpful, please be sure to like, comment and subscribe. If you made it till the end, please comment powder puff in the comments below so that I know you're there. Thank you guys and see you on the moon. Bye bye.